Skorzeny told Valentin that he was ready to give him a written document confirming that he had been promoted. Valentin was grateful to his new friend from the British intelligence for the information he had provided and agreed to help him as much as he wanted. In time, Skorzeny invited other former Weimar officers involved in the missile project to Madrid. They attended lavish parties at his home, billed as gatherings of Waffen-SS Special Forces veterans. His guests ate, drank, and enjoyed themselves late into the night, never knowing that the Israeli government was paying for their food and drinks and bugging their conversations. The information provided by Skorzeny, Valentin, and the scientists who came to Madrid solved most of the Mossad's information problem regarding Egypt's missile program. It identified precisely who was involved in the project and exactly what the current status of each component was. Thanks to the new wealth of information from this operation, Meyer Amit's Mossad managed to crumble Egypt's missile project from inside, using another number of methods in parallel. One was the dispatch of threatening letters to many of the German scientists. They were clearly they were very cleverly worded based on top grade intelligence pro, uh, provided by Valentin and included intimate details about the recipients. Remember that even if you are not to blame for the crimes of the German na uh, nation in the past, you will not be able to deny your responsibility for your deeds today. You had better consider very seriously the contents of this letter for the sake of your future and the future of your young family. The Gideons was the name of the unknown organization that signed the letters. Meanwhile, thanks to new intelligence from its sources, primarily Valentin, the Mossad was able to identify a secret Egyptian plan to recruit scores of workers from the Helisia Aircraft and Rocket Factory in Freiburg. That's uh, H-E-L-L-I-G-E, -L -L -E, and Freiburg is oh, Freiburg, F-R-E-I-B-U-R-G, who are about to be dismissed. Amit decided to take advantage of the momentum and carry out a quick move aimed at preventing their departure for Egypt. On the morning of December 9th, Shimron Perez, then Deputy Defense Minister, and Rafi Medan carried a locked case containing a number of documents in English that had been prepared by the Mossad's director's office, based on materials supplied by Skorzeny, Valentin, and the scientists who came to Madrid, and flew off for a hurriedly arranged meeting with one of West Germany's senior pol uh, politicians, former Defense Minister Franz Joseph Strauss. Perez and Strauss were architects of the re uh, restitution agreement between West Germany and Israel. Strauss rose from his seat to greet the two Israelis, and he and Perez embraced warmly. We sat for six hours, Perez said. God, that man could drink wines from all over the world and beer. I could also drink, but uh, quantities like that, six hours, and we had stopped, and we didn't stop drinking. The information Perez presented to Strauss was far more detailed, cross-checked, authentic, and gave and grave than anything that has been presented to the Germans previously. It is inconceivable that German scientists would help our worst enemy in such a manner, while you stand idly by, Perez told Strauss, who must have grasped that the leakage of this material to the international press would have... Uh, meant. You want to reread that from the quotation. It is inconceivable that German scientists would help our worst enemy in such a manner while you stand idly by, Perez told Strauss, who must have grasped what the leakage of this material to the international press would have meant. Strauss looked at the documents and agreed to intervene. He called Ludwig Bol Ludwig Bolko a powerful figure in the German aerospace industry, and asked for his help. Bolko sent his representatives to offer the Hellish scientists and engineers jobs under good conditions at his plant, as long as they'd promised not to help the Egyptians. The plan had worked. 
Most of the new group never went to Egypt, where the missile program urgently needed their assistance with the bulky guidance systems, a development that fatally crippled the project. The final blow came when a representative of Bulkos arrived in Egypt to persuade the scientists already working there to come home. One by one they deserted the program, and by July 1965 even Bills was gone, having returned to Germany to head one of Bulkos aeroplant uh, component divisions. The German scientists affair was the first time the Mossad mobilized all of its forces to stop what it perceived as an existential threat from an adversary, and the first time Israel allowed itself to target citizens from countries with which it had diplomatic relations. Given the newly raised risks, a 1982 top secret internal report was written, analyzing whether it would have been possible to resolve the affair using soft methods generous offers of money from the government of Germany to the scientists, without the mysterious disappearance of Krug or the bomb that maimed Hanelore Wende, oh, man that sucks for that guy, or the other letter bombs and the intimidation. The report concluded that it would not have been possible. The Mossad believed that whether the rep uh, whether, nah, the report concluded that it would not have been possible. The Mossad believed that without the threat of violence directed at them, the German scientists would not have been willing to accept the money and give up on the project. The next recording will be the beginning of Chapter 6, A Series of Catastrophes.